Good morning, family. God, welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother, DJ Sam Rock. God bless you, family. I hope and pray that you are experiencing a, a day that God has made for you and that you will be glad and rejoice in it. Today, I woke up with some sad news on a text. Um, sad, but bittersweet at the same time. See, let me just explain something. Um, as believers, when we lose a loved one that we know that serve the Lord, that serve God, that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is in the kingdom of God, it's bittersweet. We grieve because we're no longer going to be with that person here on this side of eternity. We're no longer going to see these people, this person, or in the family um, any longer. But then the good news is in the back of our minds, knowing that we will see them again, according to what scripture says, that those who who are born again, those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Literally, according to the scripture, we don't really die. We just change locations. But the hard part of losing a loved one is, not, is knowing that they're not here uh, with us you know, anymore. Now, uh, it's bittersweet. Some, some of our loved ones who um, suffered maybe with cancer or with a sickness and they were in pain and they were always in and out of the hospital. Um, you wonder why sometimes um, why people will pray for that person to be with us in that condition. But also remember, we're not praying most of the time, at least in my experience and with experience with other people who grieve and other families that I know who've been grieving. We don't pray for people that we love to stay in a condition that it's hurt, that they're in pain, that there's uh, you know disease or there's sickness. We pray that God will heal them. On this side of eternity, understanding that it's God's will, whether or not he heals them here or heals them in heaven. Amen. But the will of God is for us to be whole. The will of God is for us to be healed. The will of God is for us to live a life in abundance. So whether or not we see our loved one, amen, uh, really experiencing the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ on this side of eternity or not. We can be rest assured that our loved ones who serve God, that's why it's so important to me. I really want all my family to love Jesus. I want all my family to be saved. Because if this is all true, what the scripture says about our eternal, our eternal destination being alive in Christ forever and ever and ever and ever, then if I love my family, if I love my person, my family members, why wouldn't I want to spend that eternity with them? Why wouldn't I? Amen. So the love of God expressed through grieving. How do you help someone who's grieving? Listen, I'll be the first to admit I am horrible at funerals. I am horrible at those type of events um, when people lose a loved one. When I lose a loved one, I'm horrible. What that? What does that mean? It means that I, I can't really function properly. I'm not. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do because it is what it is when it comes to life and death. And I ask God to help me, amen, because I know how I, used to, how I used to experience death before Jesus. I used to think that was it. You know, I didn't know what happened afterwards. But now that I know the Lord in my life, and I know that He is um, the one, amen, that allows me to understand and allows you to understand what happens after we're out of here, uh, then it gives you comfort. God is a comforter by way of his Holy Spirit. So what? How, how do I help someone who's grieving? I grieve along with them. There's no other explanation. That's how I handle it because I see in the scriptures that my Lord and my Savior, the Lord Jesus himself, grieved with the people who lost loved ones. Remember the story of Lazarus in John chapter 11, I believe it is. Amen. Around verse 35. That is the shortest Bible scripture in a whole Bible, right? It's not a lot of words there. Jesus wept, right? Is the verse in the Gospel of John describing Jesus' reaction to death, to the death of Lazarus, a friend of his, knowing that the family was grieving, amen, and knowing that Jesus was on his way. He knew he was on his way. He knew he was going to be there at the right time. He knew that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, but he knew the pain. He felt the pain of the family grieving their brother's death and asking for Jesus. And Jesus shows up according to how they perceive things. Sometimes according to how we perceive things, 
that Jesus shows up late, but no, he was right on time. But what did he do when he got the news? Jesus wept. I believe the the answer to how do we help someone who is grieving, amen, is to grieve with them. Some people um, are have personalities that they could joke their way through grieving. Uh, laughter is good like medicine, the scripture also says, right? The Bible also says there's a time for everything. It says there's a time for everything. It's time for war, it's time for peace, it's time for laughter, it's time for crying, right? And also a time for living and a time for dying. This is not something that if someone is going to lose a loved one, it's uh, actually when we're going to lose a loved one. And that's that's a hard pill to swallow for me. And I know for a lot of people, that's a hard pill to swallow. But it's just the gospel truth. We live, right? We're born into iniquity and sin and all these other things. Then Jesus gives us an opportunity to get things right with him, right? So that way the wrath of God is no longer upon us. And he gives us salvation. Only through Jesus can you make things right with the Father. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. In other words, Jesus is the key to your eternal life and my eternal life. Jesus is the key to our eternal destination. Jesus is the key to the born-again experience. Jesus is the key to meet the Father, to make things right with the Father. Because God, uh, through the Son, has made a bridge for us to gain all access into heaven. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Today, um, I can't, I'm not, uh, for some reason, I wasn't able to share this on the website. So we're going to stay right here. Amen. If you want to go to the website um, to listen to the podcast, go right ahead. Amen. And press play on the podcast. The podcast is live. But um, I had a strange prompt that went on my screen. And it's not allowing me to share these videos. This video today, this morning, Devo, on my website for whatever reason but i really believe that god has someone and a family that i know and that i respect and that i love has lost their dad so what that happens what then happens to that family well they grieve and there's no time frame of grieving by the way i've i've i know a pastor that used to be my, my was my first pastor amen when i first got saved and he had a he lost his son and people were wondering when he would be back on the pulpit, when he would be back preaching, all that. And that, that's horrible. Amen. There's no time frame for grieving. Then my pastor, who's currently my pastor, lost his mom. And there's no time, time frame for grieving. So if he wanted to grieve a month, a year, he would he would be, you know, able to do that. Amen. But the comfort of God um, really comes upon us. I lost my dad, but I didn't know Jesus, right? Then I lost uh, uh, my uh, my first daughter. I didn't know Jesus. But when I lost my second daughter, I knew Jesus. And the comfort of God came upon me and my wife. And I lost my grandmothers, both sides of, the, of my mom's side and my dad's side. The comfort of God was with me. I knew the Lord Jesus. Amen? But without the Lord, I don't know how people grieve. You know, some people... I'll tell you how I grieved before Jesus. I got angry. I got angry when I saw my dad getting buried. I was angry, so angry that from the age of 15 all the way to the age of 30, right, I was an angry man. And people thought I was the happiest guy in the world, that I was doing this, that, and the third, that I was popular and all this stuff, but I was an angry man. I really felt that God took away something that I loved so much and that it was his fault that I no longer had a dad. So my grieving process was totally different. Um, I, I I cried, I think, two years later or a year later after my dad died because I was so angry. So I, I held anger instead of grieving through tears. I grieved through anger. And that's not that's not good. It wasn't good for me. It led me to do a lot of things that weren't good. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 18, 33, 2 Samuel 18, 33, David, King David, cried, Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. King David grieved the son, right? One of his sons that wasn't right, but didn't matter at that point because now he lost his son. And people were trying to say um, to King David, don't worry about it. You know, you should, you know, rest now because, you know, Absalom is gone. And King David said, no, that's my son. 
and he grieved over his son. The Amplified Version says the king was deeply moved. 2 Samuel 18.33, the king was deeply moved and went to the upper room over the gate and wept in sorrow. And this is what he said as he walked. Right? You ever had that type of grieving, that type of cry that you're actually speaking it out while you're crying and you're explaining to yourself and to God or to the atmosphere that you're around why you're crying this was happened that that's exactly what happened to david he says oh my son absalom why he's grieving why he's crying my son my son absalom how i wish that i had died instead of you oh absalom my son my son amazing how people take grieving differently um i just don't know what to do when i hear bad news in my family or when i, I lose a loved one i don't know what to do um, I just go to God. Amen. And it sounds cliche when it sounds like, you know, the prayer that people pray as Christians, we pray that the comfort of God will rest in the family, be upon the family. And the reason why you hear that all the time is because that's the go to Holy Spirit. God is the go to person um, by way of God. Right. That we pray and ask to comfort the family because For me, I don't know how to help people grieve other than going to God first and having him help me uh, grieve with the family. Amen. I just don't know uh, no other way to explain it. So, you know, this is I forgive me for this being the way it is. But I will promise you that after I got the text, I opened up my Bible app. I promise you this is no uh, I can't make this up. And I was thinking about, you know, what was I going to go with the morning Devo with? But I woke up to the text, answered the text, opened my app, and this scripture, 2 Samuel 18.33, popped up. Oh, my son. And then, uh, how do you help someone who's grieving was the question. Can't make that up. I woke up. Let me see. That way you, well, I can't show you right now. But you have to trust me in this one because I'm going I'm going to close my app. I want to make sure I'm not exaggerating. When I open it up, I could show you. These are my personal scriptures, by the way. The reason why you hear like a, 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 a theme throughout my, my morning devos is because um, I answer questions in this app. It's called spiritual assessment. And it will start sending you scriptures of that really are relevant to what you're going through in your life at this point. Amen. If you want some more information on this Bible app, I'm more, you know, more than happy to share the Bible app with you. So I don't know if you can see that, but it says my personal scriptures. I don't know if there's a lot of lighting going on here. It says my personal scriptures, right? You click it, and this is what I woke up to. I hope you see that. I'm not making this up. God is concerned with. All our concerns. God is with us through everything. Amen. So when I got that news this morning via text um, of my brother in the Lord, one of my brothers in Christ, I immediately prayed, answered the text, and then opened up my, my Bible app. And how do you help someone who's grieving was the first thing. You think that's coincidence? No, I don't think so. I think God is showing me that he's concerned. With all our concerns. When someone in the family of God. In the body of Christ. Loses a loved one. We all have just lost a loved one. Temporarily. The sadness of losing a loved one. As a believer is still there. On a human side. We're like we're going to miss. This person in our family. Our father. Our dad. Our mom. You know. Our sister. Whatever the situation may be. But then. Here comes the comforter. Here comes Holy Spirit God. Reminding us. That we should celebrate the life that person lived in Christ. Because to live is Christ, to die is gain. This man of God, who, who the kingdom of God here on earth has lost, will receive a crown in heaven. Amen. His family, he left a legacy of faith, hope, and love. And the greatest among the legacy that he left with this family is love. He left the legacy of following Christ, left, left the legacy of following God, amen, and many of the family could testify of this man. I didn't. I got to meet him, amen, I got to meet him personally, I got to meet him at a wedding, I got to meet him, and I got to hear him speak, 
Amen. So I'm blessed by this man that went to be with the Lord. But on this side, while he went to glory, we're here dealing with what we have to deal with on this side of eternity. Right. So that's why we grieve. And we can't I can't tell you how to grieve. You can't tell me how to grieve. People grieve differently. Amen. But the fact is, without God, I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people lose a loved one. They grieve without God. I don't know how that, without God, when I didn't have God in my life, amen, um, I was angry, like I said, when my pops died. He was the first um, um, immediate family member. My aunt had passed away before. His sister had passed away when I was younger, and I didn't really understand what was going on. I didn't understand death that way. And they were doing, uh, that's another story, they did like a, a seven-day or five-day a ten-day prayer thing um, that was a tradition. Um, that they would do and uh, people heard the story before I went through a lot of stuff um, it's not important right now but yeah my aunt died first and then years later my dad died but he was the first one that was so like it was devastating to me because I was like wait um, that's not supposed to happen um, he's supposed to be old when he died you know what I mean like that's what I thought and I took it out on the God who I didn't believe in who I didn't trust who I didn't put my faith in Blamed it on him. So I grieved with anger. And that, to me, was a plot of the enemy trying to ruin my life for good. But then God is so faithful and full of grace and mercy that he allowed me at the age of 30 years old. So for 15 years, I was just running, running, like just uh, angry and running. And people didn't know I was angry. They thought I was, you know, one of the happiest guys. And yes, I did attend church during those 15 years in there somewhere, Catholic Church. But my heart was not into following Jesus. My heart was into following myself and other people who were in there doing whatever we wanted to do in that church family. I'm not saying all the people that I grew up that used to go to the Catholic youth organization or the Catholic Church, I'm not saying all of them were doing what I was doing. I'm just saying I know the group of people that I was involved in, we weren't right. And we were doing whatever we wanted to do and then masquerading behind religion. So when I got saved, people were still accusing me of masquerading be, be, um, behind religion, right? Uh, until they started noticing that, wait a minute, God really has done a change in this man. And that's why, listen, I'm not ashamed of my testimony I will speak my testimony because it's only by the power of God that he could change a situation. He could change a life, change my heart, change my mind. Amen. And change my total destination, my my final destination. So we have two scriptures to back how grieving to grieve with other people is. Jesus wept in John chapter 11. Um, that is the scripture, the, small, the shortest scripture in the Bible. And here in 2 Samuel 18.33 on the, on the the scripture that the Lord gave me, you cannot make you cannot make this up. I get a text, you know, and I'm rewinding the tape in my mind. I was like, this is how faithful and how good God is. I get a text of a man of God that has left this earth and a family who is grieving and I ask for prayer. I answer the text. Then I open my app and 2 Samuel 18.33 is there. Um, gives me the chills because I'm like, wow, God. You are so concerned with what we're concerned with. And you know what it is. God knows what it is to lose his son temporarily. Um, because Jesus was dead temporarily, died for the sins of this world, for my sin, for your sin. And he didn't stay dead, though. Three days later, he rose again. That's why a believer in Christ knows that when we lose a loved one, who has served God, who has trusted and put their faith in the Lord, we know we will see our loved one again in glory. No more sickness, no more pain. I don't I don't even think they will they will be old in heaven. Like they won't age. I can't prove it, but I think that whatever God wants to do with our body and soul in eternity is going to be greater than what we could ever think of or imagine or dream of. Amen. So I know it's going to be a great eternity for those who are in Christ and the family members who are in Christ. That's why I've been on a mission just to preach the gospel to whoever will listen, including my family. 
Amen. Um, because I can't change a person. I can't save a person. Amen. But when somebody is, you know, grieving, I know now where to go. I know to go to God first uh, to help me grieve or to help me express uh, my love for a family member or for a friend. or Because my personality is not geared to that. But God's personality, the one who lives inside of me, amen, is geared to help. It's geared to comfort, to come alongside of family members, amen, to come along uh, alongside other families who are grieving. So how do you help someone who's grieving? The way I do it, I go to the Lord. I know it sounds cliche. The way I do it, I pray for the comfort of God and the peace of God in the family. And you know what's weird that I've discovered or that I learned when when someone passes that family members that you haven't seen for years and years and years, they come out of the woodworks, right? For for the most part, at least from what I've seen in my experience. And you know that's an opportunity um, to show love and to show forgiveness and to show concern for that family member who, for whatever reason, um, just disconnected from the family, right? And that's your opportunity to grieve. With that family member, that's your opportunity to show love, forgiveness, respect, all right, to show grace, mercy, and to introduce them to who's keeping you sane, who's keeping you alive, who's keeping you healthy, amen, during this time that we have on this planet. So that's all I had. I grieve for the family. Um, um, I'm not allowed, I shouldn't, I'm, I'm not allowed to say the name, but amen. The family that um, is, in the, is in the kingdom of God, amen, um, they know who they are. I'm not at liberty to say the name, so um, they know who I'm speaking of. And also, for those who are grieving right now, if you are out there listening and you've lost a loved one um, within this week, within this month, within this year, uh, I know there's pain. And don't let anyone tell you that your grieving process has to be you know, two weeks, three weeks, a month, you know, why are you still grieving? No one has that... Uh, no one has that authority to tell you how long to grieve or not. Go to God, amen, the one who knows about grieving, the one who's grieving over all of us, who some are in line with his word, some who are not. Do you think that God just bypasses that and sees it as, oh, uh, forget about those people who are not serving me? I don't think so. I think God is God is the God of love. He loves his creation and he wants, he showed it all through the scripture, through the Lord Jesus, God himself. He wants everyone to come to life. He wants everyone to come to life in him. Amen. Remember Jesus for Israel. He prayed and wept for Israel. Amen. Oh, that Israel will come to repentance, I'm paraphrasing, and come to the Father and all this. Jesus wept for Lazarus and his family, amen, and he's weeping, amen, and I know Jesus hurts. When I hurt, I believe the Lord hurts, and I'm not saying that arrogantly, I'm just saying that if God is so concerned with our dealings, with our life, why wouldn't he be concerned with everybody else's? The kingdom of God is here, the kingdom of God is kingdom of God is near. Amen. And it's closest to those who our hearts are broken. He's closest to the broken hearted. So for everyone who is experiencing grieving right now and lose, lost a loved one. Amen. I believe in and I trust in God. And let me just pray for you as I, I leave this um, morning Devo. Amen. And let me just pray for all those who, lo- who lost loved ones. Because the thing is, and um, I, I, I just literally, I hate death. And I think the Lord hates death as well. We're not, we were meant to die. Amen. We were meant to live forever. But Genesis chapter three, if you want to know why sin, sickness, death, disease, and all the wicked things that happen in the world, um, why they happen, generally speaking, you could answer that through Genesis chapter three. Amen. Read the whole chapter and you'll get the answer to that according to the gospels, truth, and the biblical narrative of how all that entered into um, reality, our reality. So let me pray. And then after I pray, amen, um, I'll just leave it like that. I'll continue to pray for the families. You continue to pray for me and my family. I'll continue to pray for you and your family. Um, This is one of these morning devos that it's so, you don't understand, I have have all these emotions. I'm trying to 
stick it to keep it together because um, it's inevitable. Inevitable. Uh, it's not if someone will lose someone, it's when. And um, it wasn't meant to be. That's why it's so important for you to get things right with the Lord. Amen. We're born once into this world. We're born into sin. We're bent to hell, right? And God, through Jesus, gives us an opportunity to get things right. So that way, when we do pass from this side of eternity to the next, we'll have life ever after with the Lord who created us. But if you reject the message of the gospel, you die and you stay dying for all eternity. I don't know about you, but given a choice, and I wish I would have cho chose the Lord Jesus earlier in life, amen, but he had grace upon my life, preserved me to the point where I called out his name, and he rescued me and saved me, and now I truly believe that um, not only did he save me from his wrath, but he saved me from all the things that were trying to take me out, out of this world prematurely. And he saved me and rescued me and delivered me. And he could do the same for every single person who calls upon his name, who admits that they're wrong, that they're sinners and they sin against the Holy God and believe in God's word through Jesus, believes in the salvation message, believes in the gospel, and then goes around confessing that Jesus is Lord over their lives and over their, and their family. Amen. So, Father, I thank you for today. I pray, Lord God, your supernatural comfort. Your supernatural healing power, your peace that um, that the world doesn't understand will be upon the family um, that is on my heart right now and all the families that are connected um, to the kingdom of God who have lost loved ones, Lord God, whether it be a saved loved one or someone who has never trusted in you. I pray, Lord God, that you are just God, so I pray that you would justly judge those <clears throat> that we're not sure whether or not um, they came to a saving knowledge of you. Uh, I believe, Lord Jesus, in the, the deathbed conversions, but I do not promote that. I promote what you promote, and you promote life everlasting. You promote love, grace, and mercy, and you, and you promote us to get into a relationship with you while we're alive, while there's still daytime. Amen. I pray, Lord God, that every single family that in the kingdom of God who knows of another family who's grieving, that you would teach us and show us how to help them grieve as well. I pray the comfort of God over our families who lost loved ones, family members who've lost children. I pray the peace of God upon their lives and I speak life concerning all things living. I come against the enemy right now that tries to bring anger or tries to bring resentment or tries to break families up during the time of grieving. I come against that right now in the name of Jesus. The schemes and tactics of the enemy must go in the name of Jesus over every family that's connected to the body of Christ. And I pray for those who are outside of the body, Lord Jesus, that you have grace and mercy upon them and that, Lord God, you will make yourself real to every single family member connected to the body for some reason or another why they're not connected with you. You, God, know the reasons. You, God, know every single reason, every single excuse of these people, Father God. So I pray them into the kingdom, hoping and praying, Lord God, that you, Jesus, will help them no longer resist your love, your grace, and your mercy over their lives. But you will bring them into the kingdom. You will take them out of the land of the dead and bring them into the land of the living. Help us comfort one another during the grieving process. Help us be together and united as a body, as a family of God, Lord God, through these times. And I pray, Lord God, that this morning Evo will be something of help, something of, uh, of value to a person right now, right now, who is going through grief and grieving. And that they will be reminded that they are not alone in their grieving process. That you, Lord God, are with them. The body of Christ is with them. And also that I could help in whatever, whichever way. If I could help, I'll be with them as well. So I speak life. I speak the peace of God, the comfort of God upon every single person that's experiencing a loss or going through a struggle right now and grieving over a person or losing a loved one or grieving over a situation right now that you will be with them, Lord Jesus, and that they would truly see and truly understand and truly know for sure that you are God and you are the God who loves and you're the God who comforts and you're the God who gives peace. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. Amen. And amen. God bless you, family. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Whether you're grieving or not, God is good. Go to him when you're grieving. Go to him when you're happy. Go to him when you're sad. Go to him when you're angry. Go to him with all things in your life. 
Amen. Because he's totally concerned with what we're going through. I'm telling you, I got a text, prayed, answered the text, and got this on my Bible app. Some people will say that's a tremendous coincidence. I say that is God speaking. Amen. Second Samuel 18.33. Read the whole chapter so you could get uh, more of the value of what God is saying to us today. Second Samuel chapter 18, verse 33. Read Second Samuel chapter 18, the whole chapter. Amen. God bless you. Until the next time, peace and love. And pray for me and my family. I'll pray for you and your family continuously. Peace.